Hi everyone. Here is your weekly forecast for week 15th to 22nd of March. <clears throat> so this week is starting with Mercury entering Pisces, but I miscalculated uh, the week in the last video. So I've already spoken about that in the previous week's uh, forecast. So check that out if you are cu curious about what Mercury means in the sign of Pisces. And you know, Pisces is the sign of confusion, so I find it funny because Mercury is your thought process. So I made a slightly bit of a mistake, but anyway, I think it has worked out quite greatly because this week is very impactful anyway. So bear with me at least for 30, 35 minutes because there is loads to discuss. So we're gonna start the week with Sun and Pluto sextile, which is going to be happening on the 16th of March. Now, sextile is a Venusian aspect. It's a gentle, easy flow of energy. And it carries a little bit of a familiarity within. So when we look at what Sun and Pluto means, we're basically talking about power and persuasion. So it, this aspect gives you the ability to recognize the power and the impact you can have on your ego, as well as other people's around, uh, people around you. So it's all about the chance to expose your power and to gain insight about your inner powerful self. Um, now, this can bring you an internal change or something in, uh, can be happening in your environment. It might be looking painful at the beginning, but you come out of it just greatly. Uh, you know, it, um, it raises the question, what you need to do to feel more powerful about yourself. So this is an aspect of leadership. So how can I be in the, you know, uh, behind um, the wheels? How can I gain the control back in my life? For instance, this is um, a brilliant day, for instance, to get promoted, or even you can ask for a pay rise. Now, it could indicate uh, people in power around you too, and you might be having a, a pleasant kind of um, discussion, for instance, which is going to be transforming the relationship between you and, for instance, your boss. So as I said, sex hire is a gentle aspect, so it's not gonna be that ego-driven type of energy. It's going to be more about owning the strength you have and how can I use that for my own benefit. Um, it also talks about the fact that you can manipulate and empowers, empower others and somehow poke in their ego uh, and uh, most probably to bring the best out of uh, you and others as well around you. You know, another question which uh, comes up with this aspect is what your priorities are and what am I passionate about? So am I jealous of others or am I at the mercy of others? Because if you are looking for a way out, then this aspect can help you to, to kind of gain clarity over any type of powerful situation in your life. It is also good uh, um, to stand up for something and you might get an opportunity to walk out of a situation which bothers you very much. Also, this aspect um, is very good to do some type of research or to have a counseling session, a healing session with someone, or just having a profound and deep conversation with people around you. I would say that you, you can have a deep belief in your own power and your ability to survive any change and to emerge from any type of difficulties. Um, you can have now a tremendous amount of inner resources and strength. Um, you can be very strong-willed and you can also have the power and the confidence to pursue your desires and goals. Uh, it's like, it's, a, it's an energy with full flink a complete dedication and probably a singleness of purpose as well. You can become a slightly bit compulsive, uh, even fanatical um, at times. So you might want to be living um, these couple of days quite intensely. And maybe, uh, you know, you might not have respect for those who are weak or 
who avoid any type of confrontations or, or they are not taking the lead in their own destiny. Uh, so the Sun and the Pluto transit increases the need within yourself to succeed. You might feel a lot more determined and purposeful um, to achieve your goals. And it is also a brilliant aspect to get um, difficult things done. So maybe something has broken down in your home or there is something which needs fixing and it looks complicated. Now you've got the willpower and the determination to kind of get that sorted. Um, on a psychological level, this is the purification process of your ego. <clears throat> so uh, basically the rebirth of your core identity. And, um, you know, it's like a little bit of a, a spring clean. So the Pluto is very psychological. It's all about cutting the chains off, something which is holding me back. So I'm getting the opportunity to, to actually become free again, to become who I am and to become the authentic myself, basically. Another effect of uh, the power from Pluto is to increase your level of attractiveness. So um, this is quite a sexual energy in nature, but also it gives an element of mystery to it as well. So as I said, it could give a tremendous amount of influence, uh, the power to influence others. Uh, and I feel like this could be the day also when you, um, when you kind of figure out your sexual desires. Now, this trans transit also deepens your interest in solving mysteries uh, or learning about occult uh, subjects. Uh, I usually call it as a, a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes type of uh, aspect because uh, because you can have a very good sniff to even business opportunities as well. Or you might be just having a psychological conversation with someone. So on the 18th, um, Venus is going to be sextile in Pluto. So somehow Pluto is getting uh, a major role this week. And it has got a little bit of a similar tone to that Pluto sun energy because Sun is your core identity and your confidence level, but Venus does talk about self-worth as well. But apart from that, um, it could really talk about an intense desire um, um, to form a relationship with someone, or you might have got an obsessive craving for togetherness, or just to share some deep bond with someone. Maybe you wanna be building up a deep connection with your friends, with your parents, with a loved one. Um, so the key here is to basically transform your love life. Maybe it's some negative thought patterns, uh, which is going to get replaced by something uh, lovable. Uh, we might become more vulnerable as well to others and we want to express our desire for instance, with our partner or colleagues, friends, siblings, especially female siblings. I usually call this aspect as a truth serum. So here we've got the choice to be either honest with someone because honesty is the way to get closer to your, to people who surround you. Maybe it's brilliant to share something you are afraid of but you can also have this magnetic quality towards you, um, and magnetic quality around yourself, like an irresistible charm. Pluto rules magic. So actually the law of attraction is something you can really practice with this uh, Venus um, Pluto sextile. Now watch out for your cravings for sweets because um, that could be quite increased as well. Uh, but also you might just want to share something uh, with your partner, for instance. Um, it does talk about the confidentiality in business world. So you might be making some agreements with others, uh, forming some type of powerful connections. 
because Venus does talk about negotiations. It is the ruler of Libra, which talks about contracts and business partnership. You know, you can be very loving, deeply loving, passionate and wholehearted um, these days, uh, but others might find you very intense and, uh, and extremely attractive. And, but at the same time, someone to be scared of as well. So someone who might be uh, threatening uh, me. So you can be very charismatic. Uh, you can have a powerful emotional influence on others, um, especially those of the opposite sex. If you are single, you might become obsessed with someone and it's gonna be a little bit hard to get them out of your head or mind. Uh, now, any romance which is forming under a Pluto-Venus connection can be a little bit of a whirlwind experience, but greatly changing your life somehow. Um, so a new love encounter can be on offer as well for you. But if not, it is brilliant to hang around with friends or even if possible mixing in groups uh, and you can share your feelings with those. If you have got an existing relationship, I feel like you can take your relationship to a more profound and spiritual level. You might be a lot more into sex than normal and you might want to be speaking about taboos um, than ever before, or you might become more experimental in the bedroom as well. Some of you might be experiencing a crave for affairs, uh, or an affair can be started during this influence. Uh, but I would like to remind you that in an existing relationship, superficiality is not going to be something which takes you further in these uh, few days period of time. So on the 19th, uh, well, it's an exciting day because sun is going to be moving into the sign of Aries. And basically we are going to be having our equinox, which is uh, related to seasonal changes. So, and this change is very good for the sun because um, he has got an elevated position here. It, basically, this is the sign of exaltation for the sun. The sun is a hot and dry planet, as well as Aries as a sign. And um, I would call this position as a vitalized position for the sun. And because this is the very first sign of the zodiacal circle, basically talks about new beginnings, fresh start, starting something over. So this aspect is all about connecting with things, which helps building your strength and confidence and vitality, but also being true to your core sense of who you are without being apologetic whatsoever. So this is all about doing things which is gonna be increasing your confidence level. And how can I tap into that? Um, so have a look at your own chart. Where is Aries? Uh, is it in the second house? Because it could actually boost your confidence uh, to, uh, to make more cash flow, for instance. So the sun is always spotting light in one area of life. And this is about lightening and improving those topics in your profile. But remember, with sun in Aries, we need to be the leader of the area of life. So we need to take action, we need to take initiatives. And as I said, being non-apologetic about it, because Aries is all about me comes first, me, me, and me. So I would call it as Aries is like being the match and the sun is the fire. So. It's basically a matchmaking in heaven, really. So, however, this is a cardinal energy, which only talks about an initial spark, uh, which is usually enough to get you going and start something. You know, I would say that it's like um, when you, uh, 
<clears throat> when you, you when you you know when you put your ignition key into the car and then you start the engine but it's gonna be about you how much you push that gas pedal so you know you can become a person in this period of time who thrives on challenges or you might often feel that you must battle your way through life or um, depending on no one or <clears throat> nothing whatsoever but on your own strength, intelligence, and courage. Um, you might believe a lot more in honesty to become true to yourself, uh, to your vision, and you might be very convicted about it. And uh, you have got the power to stand alone as well. So I feel like uh, you might be doing things which is serving your personal honor. Um, uh, you might crave for freedom. You might uh, crave for freedom to, to do things in your own way. And you might work very well independently as well. Now, cooper cooperating with others during sun in Aries transit um, is okay, but uh, it might not be necessarily your style because you have to become the chief executive officer type of energy. And you have got the strength to go all the way alone as well. In Aries is the sign of action. So I feel like this month you might love action and um, it's not about settling down and becoming comfortable in a rut. Uh, you are more about stirring things up and doing something new and making changes and somehow bringing like fresh blood into whatever you do. This is not the period of time when people like uh, routines, for instance, because you can easily get bored. So you need that stimulation. You are a lot more energetic. Uh, think about what happens in Aries. Spring arrives and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, flowers starts blossoming and the, you know, vegetables and plants are pricking out of the ground. Uh, the weather is getting hotter. You become impatient because you want to be on the beach. So one thing with Aries, sun, we need to learn a little bit about patience as well. And that's something very important. You can become a lot more spontaneous impulsive, direct, uh, enthusiastic, and assertive as well. So you might actually believe a lot more in, um, in powerful way of thinking. And, and, and I feel like this is kind of a start of the new year, basically. By the way, um, um, some, some of us believe, and I'm a firm believer as well, that the year is somewhere starts. Uh, this time around because the sun has finished its own journey so the hero kind of has uh, got back to the beginning of where things started and it's about gathering some strength to go for new adventure also be careful because the sun can be a little bit more aggressive um, in especially in attitude um, it's not as receptive, for instance, as it was in Pisces, and it does not have the desire to relate to others or picking up those subtle messages and nuances and listening. Uh, what, um, for instance, uh, more like a Pisces son would do. So you can become a little bit more insensitive, uh, especially in your relationship as well. Um, on, a, on one hand, as I said, is the sign of impatience. So you can become impatient with your partner at work as well, because you want things to get done as quick as possible so we can move on to the next challenge. So, you know, this time around, you might need to learn to relax a little bit and having a good old balance between, uh, you know, between moments when I'm very eager to do something, and also listening to what my partner wants as well. Now, um, this is not the only Aries energy we are having this month. 
because on the 21st, Venus is going to be joining the sign of Aries as well. And technically speaking, this is a hard position for Venus. So that's where Venus is debilitated. Um, Venus becomes a lot more independent. So I'm not going to repeat what Aries sign means because you've got a little bit of um, understanding now by having Sun in there. Uh, but as I said, with Venus, we're going to have to learn a little bit of a, a patience and we want to practice that. So uh, Venus is the planet of relationship. So from a relationship point of view, it is all about getting your viewpoint across, saying her piece and move on and solve the um, issues so, you know, we can tackle the next one. So you can get easily frustrated with your partner. And maybe because your partner is not as fast as, um, as you wish them to be. You know, Venus, was, um, Venus is the goddess of love, basically the representation of Aphrodite. Uh, so I usually describe Venus like a lady with a gun. So I love fighting, I love adventure, you know, but uh, I always question planets in that human and whole position because um, you know, Venus is the representation of female energies and Aries could be a, a masculine sign. So there is nothing wrong with that. There is probably an intense desire to, to be with someone. Yes, we might become a little bit more dominant in love matters, but also Venus here could be positive because we want to be fighting for our loved ones. Or women might be a little bit more feisty because they don't want to be ruled by masculine powers. So with Venus here, I would say that you're gonna to have to make a choice. Are you going to be depressed or are you gonna become a warrior? Because you can become a fierce tiger. Um, this is not a classic ladylike position. So as I said, these ladies wear a gun, they've got masculine expressions, and sometimes they can become a little bit scary as well. So, um, so it's a little bit of a harder position for Venus. This Venus likes shocking others as well. The, uh, Venus in Aries is all about survival instincts, but as well as protecting others. So you might want to be protecting your feminine side a little bit more. Now, you might want to experience, because Venus is the planet of joy and pleasure, so you might want to experience um, adventure and, and you might want to meet um, some passionate enc encounters. And uh, probably it's a little bit easier to get into the love spirit as well. So you might respond to things more in a decisive way. Um, and, uh, and it's gonna be probably easier to express your own desire as well. Um, and there is also an element of, I want to show that I'm better than others. And um, a little bit of a carpet in moment as well. I wanna enjoy the moment. Aries loves being in the present. So I feel like uh, this is a brilliant time when Venus is in the sign of Aries to turn our energies into a source of joy. And, <clears throat> you know, your love feelings, your desires easily could be aroused, but it might be a little bit difficult to sustain your romantic interest in a relationship. Um, <clears throat> Venus in Aries could be bringing an initial relationship you know, we've done the chasing and the conquest, the conquesting type of energy, and then we easily get bored. So forming a relationship during the period of time when Venus is in Aries <clears throat> might not be bringing you the desired long-term relationships. It's more about dynamic sexuality, being alive, um, but also sometimes, <clears throat> a strong independent streak can strike you. So astrologically speaking, this day is actually quite busy because we also gonna have Mercury sextile Uranus and that's gonna be happening on the 20th and 21st of uh, March on eight degree of Taurus to um, eight degree of Aries, uh, sorry, 
uh, a degree of Taurus to a degree of um, um, uh, Pisces. So as I said, sextile is a gentle aspect. It gives kind of an electricity, a boost to your mental activities. So your mind can be infused with wild ideas and there might be a mental shift, a breakthrough, a change in your perspective. <clears throat> you might be contemplating a lot on the present and the future. And with Uranus, we tend to be going against traditions and sometimes others as well. So this is a rebellious energy. So I feel like your brain might be running 24-7 uh, in these couple of days. <clears throat> it is like you're trying to stop for a second because, um, you know, um, but you can't. And, um, you know, but maybe there are going to be some chaos coming in in your schedule, for instance, Mercury rules, anything to do with data information scheduling. And, uh, and you are a little bit scared of what's going to happen. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, the solution is just knocking on your door. <clears throat> and that's the sextile element to it. I feel like this is the day when you're going to have to be more open to alternative ways um, to tackle any type of issues, for instance, which you can easily do. So as I said, with Uranus, there is always a little bit of a chaos. So there could be delays in your schedule or your schedule can be hectic as well. But also, uh, both planets are very much about technology. So we might be expecting a technological glimpse. Is it glimpse or glitch, that's the word I was looking for, but you're going to be able to sort that out within seconds. On a social media level, uh, I might be again expecting some type of scandals, or at least the scandal is getting somehow revised, or maybe, you know, uh, brought onto the surface again, or maybe they're going to be introducing a new phone or a new application, and Probably uh, uh, we can see a little bit of an increase in the cryptocurrency world as well. So I'm expecting a, a, a technological breakthrough. Also a brilliant day to do brainstorming. So as I said, uh, usually these are non-traditional ways. Your way of thinking can be very independent and, and you wanna be a free thinker. Probably uh, this is the day when you dislike um, being told what to do or how to do things because you're gonna have your special ways. Um, and especially you're not gonna like uh, to be told how to think about certain matters because it's all about discovering your own truth. Um, I feel like uh, these are the days when you're gonna do well in unstructured environments, which allows you to make your own decisions and to respond to the moment the way you wish. And this is not the day when you're gonna be able to follow a routine or standards, for instance. Um, and I believe this is kind of the month as well when you need to be in a fast paced atmosphere and environment something which is stimulating and exciting as well at the same time. So uh, Mercury and Uranus transit could bring an exciting news or stimulating conversations with your uh, partners uh, or your friends. Probably it's a brilliant day to learn something new or to meet new people. This is a good time to, uh, for making friends from different backgrounds than your own. Socializing is very favorable around this time. And as I said, new discoveries may also come uh, just within the flashes of light as well. Now, uh, in my opinion, and I shared that before in different videos, so I'm not gonna go on and, about, on, and on about it, but Mercury and Uranus rules astrology, so maybe some, you're gonna be gaining uh, some insight into your, um, into your astrological chart as well. So 
So this is the aspect when you're going to have to see things from a different point of view. And uh, that might be helping you solving some lingering problems. Or even you might be able to find some lost objects, uh, studies and and uh, exams uh, could be going quite well around this time, especially in those areas which is involving science, computers, mathematics, or some type of technical area of life. Now, um, on Sunday, we're gonna have Mars trining Saturn, and uh, that's gonna be happening on a 10 degree of Gemini and 10 degree of Aquarius. Now, I kind of love this aspect because it gives endurance to stay in power. Uh, it is all about blending the fast and the slow energies, long-term goals versus short-term plans. Um, so what you do now is very much determining your short-term, but also uh, not just the, the couple of months ahead, but maybe the couple of years ahead of you as well. This is the time when we need to be a little bit more practical. Um, you know, it's a push and pull energy. So you go forward and then you can step for a minute and maybe you pull back and then you re-examine something. It's all about concentrating your effort towards your own desire. So uh, I usually describe this uh, Saturn Mars energy like a long distance runner. So Mars is the one which is, um, you know, pushing you to get to the end of it. If you, let's say, run the marathon and uh, Saturn is telling you that you're going to have to spare your energy. So um, I kind of like this aspect, actually. It is asking you the question how to put your energy into something which you're going to be very grateful in the next couple of years. You might want to do some extra exercise. Um, because it's going to have its pay off later on, on. So, you know, it's a short-term pain, a long-term gain type of aspect. So you might possess the gifts of endurance and perseverance, the willingness to work hard and to seriously achieve your objectives. Once you decide to, once you decide that you want something, you will be able to make commitment uh, and even if it takes forever, but you're going to have the motivation as well as the self-discipline. So this is a brilliant day, for instance, to start your diet. Um, you should choose practical, realistic goals and trying to pursue them step by step. So it needs to be well planned. Um, you know, Saturn is all about the structure. And um, <clears throat> Saturn always wants to concentrate on one thing at a time. So um, Saturn could represent your career. So this could be a brilliant time when you can push forward in your career. Again, it's very good for promotions or even getting something done in the business. Part. Sorry, my dog is just ran out because um, some movement happening outside. Probably they already feel the Aries type of quality in the air. So we can have a very strong work ethic and probably we're gonna be able to pay attention to details as well or uh, carrying out some complex tasks. Uh, usually this transit actually uh, prefers uh, or favors manual work such as constructions and mechanics. Uh, but as I said, it's all about your passion and ambition, which going to help you to succeed in anything you uh, passionately care about. I feel like this is uh, also very good to make solid progress with a long term project. Um, uh, it won't bother you that it won't appear instantly. Um, also, relationship is possible at the end of the day. Uh, and you might be attracting loyal people, or you're gonna be starting to look for someone who is reliable and strong. So this is our exciting week. We start in our Aries chapter. So check out where your Aries in your chart, make a comment in the comment section below. 
Uh, and how you feel about the upcoming month as well. So thank you very much for being um, here with me. And I'm going to see you shortly with another video. Thank you and have a blessed day, everyone. Bye bye.